All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of the Views from the 906 podcast. I'm Dylan Himmela. I'm joined today by Justin Riley, Mike Williams, Parker Miller, and we have our first guest. He was the captain of the 2014 Gremlin State Championship hockey team. He's the captain of the 2019 Michigan Tech Husky hockey team. And most importantly, he's a friend of the show, ladies and gentlemen, Ray Bryce. How are we doing, Ray? Great, boys. Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So... First, I want to talk about your 2014 state championship run with the Gremlins. I What's that have, like? I have to correct you there. We actually didn't uh, didn't win the state championship You're lying. in 2014. Oh, and, uh, that's a good start. That's exactly how we wanted to start it off. <laughs> we ended up losing to Sault Ste. Marie. In the, oh, that's they right. actually upset us. We probably should have won that game in uh, 2014. 2012, we were state runner-up, though. You got a trophy for state runner-up? Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, all we right. Were well, state runner-up in wow, 2012. Wow. Were you on that but, team? Uh, what were you, a freshman or a sophomore? I would have been a sophomore then. I saw a picture okay. of you with the C on the old jersey and holding up a trophy that looked like a state championship trophy. That was probably the regional okay. uh, regional trophy. All right. Well, I suck. <laughs> but anyway, uh, so talk about that. What's that like in high school, uh, having a great team? Yeah, what's it like being good? <laughs> uh, none of us in here like know how it is to be on a really good team like that. Maybe Justin, but um, I was on yourself. a winning team. I was on a winning team twice with Justin, so that that's my only two years in travel. Yeah, we we uh, we were pretty good. I my freshman year, I think we were under five hundred, but uh, after that, I think well, we were at least seven fifty one percentage every year. Um, Three really good teams. The best team I probably played on was my senior year. Um, guy like guys like Connor Hannon, um, Reed Piela, Jed Callio were on that team. Um, that was, like I said, that was our best year. But my sophomore year, we went the farthest. But I think my sophomore year, the key to that team was uh, everyone got along the best. It was the best team chemistry. And that's just so what was the sophomore the year? Team. Was that like uh, uh, Aaron Colmine in? Yeah, that would have been Colmine in, Matson, uh, Heath Johnson. Line made of mine back then. Uh, That's a good group of guys right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hunter Ryla and D. So we were uh, we were pretty good that year. My junior year, uh, we were also pretty good, but we uh, we the Sioux the Sioux was really good that year. So we ran to them two years in a row. Hannon's they, playing uh, over at Finlandia, us. right? Yeah, yeah, he's the captain at Finlandia now. So, what was the um? What's the vibe like on? A snowy Tuesday night when Lons Hockey's coming to town. What's that like? <laughs> Do you guys give a shit at all? Is that like a I guaranteed mean, dub in your book, or how does that go down? I don't. You know, I don't. To be honest, I don't remember a lot of games in high school because I I played a lot after that. Yeah, that's true. Obviously, so. But I yeah, I mean that was. <laughs> I'm not trying to shit on you or anything. But no, that was go for it for us. So, uh, I think I think the guys the the guys that played on the third and fourth line were probably a little bit more happy to. That you guys were coming to town because they no. knew they'd get a little more ice, And we so. still lost 8 nothing. Did you play <laughs> in-laws at all? Yeah, uh, Meadowbrook, eh? <laughs> what do you have? What, what was your experience like there? Uh, I I, uh, I only remember one game there, but I, I remember somebody was throwing pennies at me. Cause <laughs> oh, yeah. Right over the ice, <laughs> Sounds like Meadowbrook. <laughs> getting called every name in the book, right? <laughs> Great oh, yeah. place. R- racist slurs, everything. So... So we were just a, we fun, were just though. a complete joke to you guys, huh? Sorry about that. <laughs> we were just a complete joke to you guys. <laughs> I mean, you guys, I, Van. I remember Van Wagner was pretty good. Yeah. I mean, we, there were, and that's that's where it stops right there. <laughs> to be, to be honest stop. with you guys, it was it was uh, it was tough to play teams like it was hard for us to play teams like you guys because our coach Corey Markham in high school would always skate us if we didn't perform Ooh, our best. The trap so game. It, it was up to it was up to. We were always up for a challenger. That's to, a good. Uh, that's a good way to do it. How right. was Markham as a coach? Good. He's uh he's a really good coach. He's very organized. He runs his bench for, pretty good. Um, he knows how to utilize good. I really liked him. Is, he's one of the best coaches I've had. So is he still there? Yeah, yeah, he's still there. Shout out to his relative uh, Jeff Markham. Uh, works in Berga. Shout out to him. <laughs> it's a. Uh... Let's move on from high school yeah, a little yeah. bit. How was how was the uh, you started you went from your senior year you went straight to the NA right? Yeah, yeah. I played uh, left my senior after my senior year. I went and played in the Sioux uh, 
funny story. Actually, our team in Sault Ste. Marie, the, the North American League was pushing for our East Division. So our team actually got sold out East, uh, what became Jersey. the New Jersey Titans. Uh, so I ended up moving with the team. So that was actually, I was the I was on the last team in the Sioux and the NA there. They now have a new team, or a Sioux Eagles, same same name, but they just belong to a different league. Was it was was Bruno still the coach, or did they get a new coach by the time you got uh, there? Yeah, Bruno was Bruno kind of ran. He was more of a GM type. He was back and forth. Uh, we had a guy that played at Northern when I was there. His name's Alex Sorok. He was the head coach. I really liked yeah, him I as know well. Yeah, uh, I believe he's actually back with them. Uh, I don't know if he's an assistant or a head coach there, but I know I think their head coach is Doug LaProd, who was an assistant at Lake State. Uh, he actually recruited me at Lake State when I was in high school. But did uh, you? Uh, did, did, sorry, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Did you like Bruno? Because uh, Borgen, Borgen, I know hated them. I like Bruno. Bruno recruited me too when I was in when I was in high school. I know Borgen hated them, but I liked them. The yeah, like I Bruno, yeah, me Borgen and Bruno like? actually got along really good. Uh, he liked me. He's the one that signed me, so I never had any problems with him. I know there's guys that don't like him, but I, uh, I personally, I did like him. Uh, he was kind of an old school guy, though. Very old school. And he I like that, though. He, yeah, you just had I and the, one of those coaches that you just kind of have to, whatever they say, you're gonna have to do right. Because he didn't exactly. like the guys that went against his grain. And Borgen yeah, exactly. was kind of one of those guys too, exactly. right? You're not the type well, of guy to <laughs> ruffle his feathers up. Like right. that's the type of guy Borgen is for sure. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, so how yeah. how many years did you play there before you uh, went I to played Tech? in Sault Ste. Marie one year, and then I played in New Jersey for a year. And then you went to Tech? Yeah, and then I came to Tech. So, so you didn't so you didn't even age out of juniors then, right? You probably yeah, had more year left. I did, yep. Because I have a so like I have a late late birthday, so I'm like older in my class. But like so a lot of kids when they go graduate from high school, they have three years of junior left because they're an early birthday, and when I mean early from like January, June birthday, but I'm a November birthday. Right, that's so what I'm, I had, yeah. Yeah. So I only had two years coming out of high school to play junior. So I did age out. Gotcha. Okay. As you transition to tech, what's that like? What's what's kind of the buzz around town with your family? You know, your close friends. What's that feeling like as you're about to go play for tech? Yeah, was, I mean, it's exciting. Um, I wasn't really sure what to expect. I know, honestly, it was a big step from the NA to college. And I, I mean, looking back, I think that was the biggest jump I've made in my career. Um, but... I mean, it was good. I I love playing at home. I my freshman year didn't go as planned. I played one game, and some guy absolutely destroyed me. His name's Carter Fogeth. He was the captain at Minnesota State. In my first game, I lasted about three shifts. Oh, Why do I know that name? Uh, tried to tried to get up, and I was a deer on deer on the ice. I, uh, he scrambled my eggs pretty good. <laughs> so it's tough my freshman year, but I do. I really love playing here. I mean, when my I still live at home. So that's nice. That's that crazy. Perfect. That's that's definitely an advantage, I think, for sure. Yeah, did, yeah. Did you did you consider any other schools? I did. Yeah, I had some other offer, or I was talking to some other schools, but I I knew that I wanted to come to Tech. Uh, like, I mean, that's every kid's dream from around here, obviously. So for sure. When they kind of extended the offer, I jumped on it. Um, moving forward then into the 2017-2018 season, I think that was your sophomore year. Yeah, you guys had a crazy little run there. You want to talk about that? Just going uh, to the playoffs and then getting a bid for the NCAA tournament. Yeah, that was uh, what the locker room was a, like. A crazy, uh, crazy playoff run. I I don't think that anyone's um, done that in a in a long time where they've won every. I, we played every series on the road, and I remember we Bemidji. We knew that we were better than them, but we were ranked lower, and we went in there. And I think if I remember correctly, we swept them. And uh, yeah, you did pretty fired up. And then we went to Mankato. Uh, that's a tough place to play. I don't think we'd won. Tech hadn't won in Mankato since 2012, and it was something like six years. I mean, nobody expected us to win. We lost Friday night. Um, What's the vibe like after that loss? And they're yeah, that's they right. are the number one ranked team in that tournament. So yeah, you got your uh, your backs against the wall. So it's I mean, <laughs> do or die, right? Yeah. And I ended up actually scoring the game winner that game. I played horrible on Friday night. I remember that. And uh, our uh, Devin Carroll was our goalie at the time. He actually got hurt. And a uh, guy by the name of Packy Munson stepped in on Saturday. 
and he was unbelievable. I uh, like stole both games at Mankato. I remember we won Sunday in overtime. Uh, wow. Jake Jackson came across the blue line, kind of shot through a screen there, and uh, won the game in OT. And I mean that then then we knew that we had a chance of. I mean, we were one game away from winning the WCHA. That's crazy. That's and, that's a uh, that's a really big deal to beat that good a team in that fashion after going down one zero. Yeah, like that's that's a tough yeah, weekend to that win. That was a that was probably the one of the craziest runs I've had in my career. I, I don't nobody expected us to do anything uh, right out of the right out of the gate there and going into playoffs. But I, 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 our goaltending was unbelievable. Um, we just had a lot of guys step up and really. I remember we went to Northern and that was. Maybe the be- best atmosphere I've ever played in. Yeah, I can't imagine. I had that one. Yeah. My, I was there, man. That game was – that was fun. Yeah, I, we, I looked over at my buddy. He's like, I can't even hear myself think. And it was, <laughs> it was an insane it. atmosphere. And, uh, we, we always uh, – it would have been interesting to see. I mean, obviously, you don't want them to score. But, like, what if Northern scored that game? How loud that place would have been because we shut them out 2 nothing. Yeah, yeah, but and even though you're on the road there, uh, that's got to feel like almost like a home win, you know. Like that's got to feel good. It's got to feel a lot better than going to play in Minnesota for sure. Yeah, yeah, that was a blast. I'm, and then we got like a police escort back to town and stuff like that after and shut them out. So, I mean, it's always fun playing Northern in their bar, but that I mean, the stakes were a lot higher there. I, they expected to beat us. I think we were the underdog again, and we ended up uh, shutting them out. So that was a. I mean, that was probably one of my favorite games that I've ever that I couldn't I've even move. College, so. I couldn't even move, man. It was shoulder to shoulder in the Barry. Yeah. I remember going there with my friends, and it was just yeah, and they, so many Northern people. did their classic, their ticket scam there, so we had barely any fans. Yep. Uh, that's, yep. A, that's a known not, thing that goes on. Northern there, hey boys. That's a known <laughs> thing. Wow, wow. That, but, uh, that's just the perfect way to cap that off after going on that run to beat Northern in Marquette. Like, hey, let's just do it one more time, man. And then you guys right. shut them out. And then you get the yeah. NCAA tournament bid, and you go to play Notre Dame. What's what's that travel like as you're going to the NCAA tournament? So the the tournament's actually a, uh, like you get a chartered flight. So you go, they come to your airport, and so we fly right out of Houghton. We flew, I think it was right into the airport, the nearest airport to the rink there. Uh, we fly out on like a Tuesday, or I don't remember the exact days that we yeah. played, but. You fly out the day before you practice one day, and then you play the next. So you pretty much fly out two days before you take off or uh, or play, I should say. And then uh, the charter is unbelievable. You got all these uh, flight attendants offering you snacks, and oh, you're getting all the good treatment. Yeah, yeah, that's and the way to do it. The the uh, the chairs, the size of a recliner, and you can lean back in them and stuff like that. And then you don't have to worry about going through like security or anything. Your bus pulls right up to the tarmac, and so that was that was fun. That was a blast. So uh, not a, not a whole lot of time to think before that either, because you kind of you you beat Northern, and then you turn around, you guys fly to Connecticut, you get a day to practice, and then you're playing. Like there's not a whole lot of uh, I don't I don't know the leeway time in between those two games, but not a whole lot of time to kind of yeah. Dissect I think it was it. like a three or three day, four day maybe. I don't I don't I don't remember the exact time frame, but. Yeah, it was a quick turnaround, and, and that was a good atmosphere, too, uh, in Notre Dame. And, again, we were underdogs, and we outplayed them but, uh, and came up short on that one. Yeah, and I actually watched the highlights of, of that game today. Um, so they were, the, they were the number two team in the country. They were the number one seed in your guys' region that you were playing in. So, obviously, a pretty tough game. And you actually created a really good scoring chance in the first period behind the net there. You threw it out in front. The goalie snubbed it out, but it was a good chance. Then you had another scoring chance in the second, and you have to have you want you want that one back. I know you do. Yeah, yeah. There that one. There was that one in the first two in the front in the front of the net. I remember that puck jumped right over my stick. Uh, they say hockey's a game of inches, and exactly. I mean, <laughs> retracting back to that statement of game of inches. I've later in the game before they scored, right before they scored, there's a picture floating around the rink that we have is. Uh, one of our guys, I think Alex Smith, was the his, the puck was pretty much on the goal line, and they they somehow kept it out, and then the puck went back out to our D man and Mark Ock, and he, his stick broke. Yeah, they went all the way down the ice, and then uh, ended up throwing it to the point, and they scored. 
It's kind of just a heartbreak. It, it was such a great yeah. save, too. So the stick breaks, which is like, oh, shit, here we go again. They go on the breakaway. You get a great save, but they still take control of it. The guy still doesn't have a stick, and then they set up a shot from the point and score. Yeah, they had a point yeah. shot there, and I think it was just a seeing eye shot. Just it, crazy. That was a, that was a tough way there. to lose, man. I have a, yeah, I have a question. Tough. I have a question about the beginning of that, though. Uh, how did you guys uh, – what was your prep like for Notre Dame? Did you guys study tape, or you only had three days, like you said, so how did, how did you guys prep for them? Yeah, the, the prep – for every team is usually the same. Um, you watch video and you go over all their systems, what they do. Um, we knew that they were going to be a good team, but uh, a lot of a lot of what we do, we don't change. It's just how uh, tweaking little things uh, to see how how we can imp- improvise against their, their systems and how the the way that they play and and what we do is always usually staying the same. So, has it been the same since you've been there? Yeah, yeah, the prep. Uh, we always watch video every week on the team that we're playing. Um, the coaching staff and the video guys will go through the the game tape and stuff like that of the team's past four games, go over that, and then you'll get, I mean, pre- like I know like I'm not a power play guy, so we'll, act, we'll act, enact their power play or their penalty kill for, for uh, the power play guys so that they can get a look at what they're running on their systems and their power penalty kill systems and stuff like that so and you guys uh you guys tied that game up really late to 106 in the third and you guys scored to tie that game that's got to be like some feeling but obviously you lose it in overtime which sucks but what a crazy yeah, that game was, that was that was exciting i mean i remember uh that was jake jackson came down that left wing there that was the same guy that um that scored that OT winner at Mankato. He's a cl- wow. He scores some clutch goals. Uh, he, that guy scores a lot. Is a lot of clutch goals that I've seen. And uh, yeah, he came down that wing and put it right under the goalie's arm, if I remember correctly. What a crazy season. I mean, it's it's a heartbreaker, and I'm sure you guys thought about it for a while. But man, just just to get there, how you guys did it is it's really impressive. Yeah, that was. I mean, like I said, I don't think anyone expected us to do that. Uh, is so. Uh, going on a run like that's, I mean, one of the best things that you, like, for me as a hockey player, it's some of the best memories that I'll have, right? Oh, absolutely. And just the experience, so, like, it's a blast. the number yeah, two team in the see, country. You guys lost in see, overtime. Uh, everything. And, I mean, you play against guys that are going to be in the NHL, have NHL careers for a long time, and some good players. And, yeah. So it, it was very exciting. Um, coming in, coming into this year, what's the conversation like? Uh, does the head coach tell you? How does the whole captain thing happen? Being the hometown kid. Yeah, we. Uh, so what happens is uh, we we vote on the. Um, well, the coaches hand out sheets, and you vote on. Uh, there's a. I, I'm not going to get into super detail here, but pretty much what happens is you vote on it, and he just uh, pretty much brought me in and said that I had the most votes or whatever, and. Kind of told me that I was going to be the captain. Oh, you just do it old school. Yeah, not a bad way to do it. Wow. No, so what's no. the what's the reaction from you like, or what's going through your mind at that point? Is this like holy shit, dream come true, or what's going on there? Yeah, I mean it was exciting. Um, there's a lot of history in this university. It was ex- there's a lot of guys that have wore that ste with that have played a uh, long, extensive NHL careers. A lot of guys that I looked up to that wore the C when I came in. Even as a kid, I remember captains watching them and looking up to them so it was a a huge honor and i was pretty excited about it and then obviously kind of following the footprints of uh tanner carroll a little bit being the hometown guy wearing the c so that's that's pretty cool man yeah Um, thank you appreciate that what is what's the vibe like this season i know you guys are five and six uh how how's it been going this year just swept uh, lake um, state though right yeah just swept lake state individually i've had actually a pretty tough start to my year um uh (laughs) pretty unhappy with how I've done actually so far. I need to be better to be honest, but uh we we've played a very tough schedule to start. I actually think that that we have a a very good team. Um we're a little bit young still. Uh, there's a lot of a lot of guys that are still that are playing every night that are sophomores and freshmen. Um but like I said we played a tough schedule. We go into Nodak. Uh I think they were ranked number five this week. We play Mankato, uh, number one in the country this week. We split with Bowling Green, who's ranked. Um, and BG and Mankato were the top two teams in our league last year. So there's four out of our 
11 games right there. Nodak is five out of 11 that we've played. And then we, we, uh, we went to Robert Morris and, uh, to start the year and they were, uh, they were pretty good on Friday night or on Saturday. And I, I was, that was our first game. And they, uh, they took out their starting goalie on sat or on Sunday and we kind of put a walloping on them. I don't think that maybe that if there's a different goalie, that's a different game, but uh, I thought they were all right. That was a big, big uh, start to the season for us. And then uh, Alaska comes in and sweeps us, which was pretty surprising, but they're a very well coached team. They have good structure. Uh, they played, they played the right way and they, uh, they swept us and then they go in and they sweep or they split with Penn state, I think who's top 10 ranked team. So I, I a credit to them that Alaska, I mean, that's kind of a blemish on our schedule. Usually uh, if we lose to them, but I, I think they're a very good team. And I, obviously we like to have at least one of those two wins back, but. Well, yeah. And what you got on your side here is you still got a lot of time left in the season and uh, no bigger time to start turning things around than this week. Um, right. Playing at home yeah. against Northern on Friday and then going to Marquette on Saturday. So, I mean, it's a good way to uh, spring into the holiday season, start getting some wins on your belt. Actually, yeah, I have yeah. a question. I have a... So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Ray. No, I was just saying a big uh, string three to three or four wins together here. If we can get the Friday night win, that's three in a row. That's, I mean, they say two is a fluke and three is a streak. So, that'll be, that's, it's going to be a big test for us this week. And I'm interested to see where we stack up. That's a big game. We're excited. I was, I was going to ask, you said that you're not happy with the start of your season. I don't know how much you want to talk about it, but uh, would you like to elaborate a little bit? What do you think is going wrong so far? Yeah, I just, I mean, personally, I, I think the team has actually done all right, and we're we're fair fair to say where, where we're at is okay. Um, I'd like to have a little more wins, but personally, I just, like, I think I need to be just, just better, more consistent. Uh, a little more opportunity would help, obviously, but you're not always going to get that. Um, I just, I need to, and I've, I've had a, like, we got a goal called back uh, one weekend. I had a breakaway that I missed on just like stuff like that. If I, if those go in, maybe I have a little more confidence and coming down the stretch, it helps me out. But uh, just, a, just need to do a little bit more with my opportunity when I get one here. Yep. Okay. I hear you. Like I said, man, you got a long season left, and uh, you got a lot of people that are in your corner, man, including all of us here, and then I'm sure a yeah, lot of people back that. there. So just uh, keep doing your thing, keep working hard, and the opportunities will come, buddy. Yeah, will do. So that's all we got for you, pal. Um, we really appreciate you coming on. You're our first ever yeah, guest. Thanks, Ray. So there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of pride that. in that. And uh, awesome. sorry, sorry about the state championship, but you're a state champ <laughs> in my eyes, buddy. Thank you. All right, uh, take care, anytime, pal. Anytime, boys. If you'd like to have me on again, I'll come on again. So. Yeah, for sure. I, I, yeah, we want to get you on again for sure. Yeah. Okay, sounds good. Take boys. care, buddy. Good Take luck care. this weekend. Thanks for having me on. All right, that was Raymond Bryce, ladies and gentlemen. Um, big series for them coming up. Appreciate him coming on the show. He's definitely uh, welcome back anytime. We're going to move into the NFL over the past weekend. You guys watch the games? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I always tell myself I'm not going to watch the Lions game, and I just always watch it. I don't know why I fucking do this to myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just, I, you know, I, I don't know. I watch, I, I don't know. I didn't watch. Jeff, I, Jeff, Jeff Driscoll's killing it a little bit. <laughs> well, I mean, they played the, play the Cowboys, and they, it's not the end of the world, but without, yeah, without Stafford, argue, you're screwed. Bro, no, it is. Yeah, he's out fans, for a while. Yeah, he's going to be gone for a while. Wait, really? The injury's that bad? Fan, yeah, like six, Two weeks at, at least. least. Six weeks. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yep. So he's, he's for the rest, basically season. done for the season, yeah. We're going yeah. for the number one pick, baby. <laughs> Tanking for Tua. Who, who are you going to get? You don't want Tua anymore. No, no. Fuck, man, get the fuck out of here with Tua. You don't want Tua anymore. You want Justin Herbert. That's who you want. Is that the LSU no, kid? No, nah, Oregon. No, Burrow. You want Burrow. You think nah, Joe he's, Burrow. A, he's a bust. <laughs> he's still <laughs> bust. Anyway. You can't tell who busts are. <laughs> yeah, relax. Who's the last LSU quarterback drafted number one? Who's the last quarterback Jamarcus Russell Russell? drafted that was good? Jamarcus Honey Russell. <laughs> for, all, for, for all I care, I'm a better talent Joe scout Harrington. than the Bears and the Lions. Bro, How about Joe that? Harrington is a legend. Harrington, <laughs> yeah, I remember. <laughs> yeah, when you were six years old. 
as a Packers Joe, fan, he's bro, he's fucking terrible. Didn't he win the Heisman? Did he? For uh, Oregon? I For think Oregon? he did. I don't know. I'm, I'm almost pretty sure he did. He was on the cover of one of the football games, I remember. Really? <laughs> Wait, yeah. Joey Harrington was popping bro. like that? <laughs> yeah. It wasn't mad, yeah. right? It was like NFL Street or some shit? No, it was, it was uh, EA NCAA. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I was going to say, same one Larry Fitzgerald was on back in like 05 that you would get with your Xbox. What else happened in the NFL last weekend? I'm, I'm having a brain fart. Baltimore killed Houston. Pack Bro, had a ball game. Oh, oh, my favorite team in the entire NFL played in Los Angeles, the Chicago Bears. The Chicago Bears who run wow. 41 plays in the first half and don't score a single fucking point. 41 plays. They had the ball for the entire first quarter, and they fucking stink. Their kicker stinks. Their quarterback stinks. Their head coach stinks. They all fucking stink. They Are they saying uh, that he was like, Yeah. Is he benched or was he quote unquote? He said injured? he was hurt. hurt his hip. But it doesn't matter. That's, he needs to not be him. on the field at he all. He needs some vagicils, is what he needs. <laughs> you need to take lessons you need from to, back You need to pre, tank for Tua game. or whoever you want, or you need to find a new quarterback, or you need to get rid of your head coach. Because Mitch Trubisky isn't the guy that's gonna fucking throw forty two passes a game like you want him to. That's not your Let's fucking guy. Just take the loss and and you know, because they picked him over um a lot of people homes like how does that how does that gm feel right now like he's a relatively young guy isn't he the gm for the bears yeah is he yeah i'm pretty sure and like he drafted way up to get trubisky yeah they traded up yeah they well, it was like a, it was like a spot or two it wasn't like something crazy but still but they don't have any something. first round picks for a while i don't think anyway at least at least this year they don't so they're kind of fucked they kind of got to ride him out and hope he like I don't know. I, I personally think they need a new head coach. It's third and one, fourth, whatever it was, and the guy just won't run any plays that aren't shotgun formation. He won't get in the eye and fucking run the ball for the yard. He won't do anything. He just wants to throw these fucking screen passes and these fucking swing passes, and they don't get anything. He's got, he has, like, the idea that he has Patrick Mahomes, but... Exactly. <laughs> hey, so the the GM, his name is Ryan Pace, and it's got his height and weight on here like he's a fucking player. <laughs> Bro, his, his, I, career, his look, his career history is New Orleans Saints op- operations assistant. <laughs> nah, nah, listen, listen, dude. He's six three two fifty. I saw him on Twitter Damn, today, like in a picture boss. or a video. He's a, he's one handsome guy, bro. That's a handsome GM, man. Just a young man, got some gray on the sides. He's not like your Damn, typical should, like John Dorsey. They should GM. put they should put him in that tight end. <laughs> I mean, not, maybe he can play quarterback <laughs> for a week, huh? We'll play. <laughs> got a snort in the house from Parker Money Miller like that, bro. Any oh, put anybody in that quarterback at this point, like. And then your kicker can't hit anything. Like you could have been up nine. You could have had nine points on the board early, and then he just misses. And then you go for it on fourth and nine because you don't trust him. Like, oh yeah, sure, let's go for it on fourth and fucking nine. Great fucking plan, Nagy. Great. I'll tell you who they're gonna pick up at quarterback. Cam Newton. Kaepernick. Uh, they didn't even go to his workout. <laughs> they Somebody were. Needs to pick up. They were Somebody one of the twenty-five teams Cam. that didn't go. Bro, he's not yeah, they should trade for Cam. Yeah, but no, only, Cam if he, needs... only if he only only if he agrees to eat meat. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. The only way you can survive in Chicago <laughs> is if you eat meat, bro. Sorry, you have to eat beef. <laughs> you got to eat a shit ton of bratwurst in Chicago. Cam, Cam would be out there for three hundred pounds, six five, three hundred. There's no, there's no vegan shit. He might be better, in Chicago man. Sorry. He might be. He, he needs fridge, some fresh the veal. Freezer. Is what he needs. <laughs> the, the freezer. The, just remember the freezer. Duncan Randan. Yeah. Fucking Haas. Um, oh yeah, the Minnesota and Denver game, that was good. Denver just they blew it. They were blew up, it. they were up big yeah. early, but also at the end they had a chance, right? It's like fourth down and five or something. There there's a ton of time on the clock. He runs the quarterback runs for the first down, and then it was it was off their last timeout. How do you not have two plays lined up after your last timeout? He he scrambles, he slides down or gets hit, whatever the fuck happens, and the the entire offense looks over at the sideline and they burn 18 seconds off the clock trying to get a play in, and luckily uh, the Vikings had called a timeout on defense. It's like, what are you doing? How do you not have two plays ready to go to score? And then they get to throw three plays. None of them work. They're throwing the fucking fades in the corner. None of them work. You could have had another play, but you burnt 18 seconds. It just doesn't Clowns. make any sense. Like, Dude, uh, Denver get... plays a lot of teams like that. Denver's been playing everybody pretty tough. They just can't win. I want to get I want to get a camera, and I want to set it up in Mayo's uh, apartment or house, wherever he's at, and I want to set it earlier in the week just to watch him. But then after that, I want to watch him on a Sunday night game, watching 
the Denver Broncos and just watch him <laughs> at his fucking like. TV where I picture him all the time doing that and I just laugh like I can just picture Mayo just flipping the fuck out. Is he like a hardcore Denver <laughs> fan? Like is he like I mean he's a Denver he yeah, he's a Denver fan. Like yeah. pays attention on a week to week basis type shit. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I oh, think yeah. so. That's dude, that's a tough team to watch, man, because you're playing teams so close, but then you just suck. <laughs> yeah, Welcome hey, to my life. Mine's been doing that for the past and how many years? <laughs> Bro, did you see the yeah, tweet that Papa came out? Cameron just your Pop a camera in your average Lions fan living room and see what happens. Like, if you could progressively from, from yeah, game one and... to from week one to week 16, just a progressive video of Sundays watching the Lions. Yeah, the decline in personal appearance, yeah. You start looking like shit. Yeah, Worn and out. just your ability to give a shit about anything just goes out the window. So yeah, yeah. The, like Lions... the, fir- the first few first few weeks, you're pretty jacked up. You know, you yeah, oh, we do something this year. Yeah, every year we'll do some. There was a, yep. it's there like was a, um, it's like that scene in in Wedding Crashers when he goes and visits Will Ferrell, and the dudes don't kill yourself. Oh, look at, <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, not the don't kill yourself books. It's oh look, I'm 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 uh, hang gliding. Oh wait, I'm dead. What an idiot! <laughs> like that's the basic yeah. Lions fan having such a great time. Oh wait, dead. Listen, listen to this oh, stat though. They average twenty four points per game on their losses, which is a good number. And it says, for perspective, if these teams scored twenty four points on their losses, this would be the record. The Patriots would be eight and one. The Ravens would be eight and two. The Bears, if they scored twenty four points per game, would be seven one and one. And the Bills would be undefeated at ten and zero. So they wow, obviously the defense. Lions have you know the assets. I, I guess their defense must suck because they're, they're scoring twenty four points in their losses. That's brutal, man. But it's a loss. No, I know, absolutely. But I'm just saying that they can obviously put up the numbers. No, it's, that just shows that it's defense, yeah. yeah. It just it shows that the team can't finish. But didn't they just trade away one of their best corners? Or was that guy safety or something to the Seahawks? No, he's not a best corner. Oh, he he's like good. our third corner. Oh, okay, okay. I mean, he, he could play, but he's yeah. not like our best player. It's just, it's tough, man. I don't know. I bought way too much into the Lions hype that I was seeing on Twitter. Man, I don't even want to talk about the Lions anymore until next year, bro. Imagine being a Chicago. I mean, it could be worse. You could be Chicago. So, True I mean, that. I don't. The way the way I think about it, I don't feel as bad because we haven't been playing with Stafford, so the games don't hurt me as much. Yeah. So it's okay. It eases the blow. Oh, uh, that it game's does. coming up. Actually, it'll be a Driscoll versus Chase Daniel matchup on. Is that on Thanksgiving? Chicago, Detroit. I believe so. so that'll be fun. I'm sure. That'll be a great game. Yeah, I can't wait to watch sweet, that. Sweet, yeah. Everybody's <laughs> going to love that game on Thanksgiving. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you guys can score 24 points, you win that game because Mitch can't score 10. Well, it'll I be think Chase Daniel. Score 10 points. It'll be Chase Daniel, but they're not going to put 20 on the board. So you guys should win that game. As long as we can score three points, we should beat the Bears. Yeah, and that, that could work too because they can't kick either. They're, they're <laughs> actually going to probably get safeties just running back, and it's going to. Yeah, I don't think there's a lot nothing. of good games in the NFL. Well, Philly and Seattle, that's this week. Detroit plays Washington. That should be an easy dub for you guys, I would imagine. Maybe not. Don't though. say that. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> no. San Francisco, San Francisco Green Bay. Suck. Yeah, the 49ers and Green Bay, that's yep. going to be a good game. And Dallas and New yeah. England. Go 49ers. Who do you guys got in that? Who do you guys have in Dallas? New, who do you guys have Dallas, New England? New England. Where, New where England. is it? It's at New England. Yeah. New England. Yeah. Ooh, I think it's going to be a close game, but yeah, you can't go against Tom. shitty teams. And then who do you guys have? Green Bay at San Francisco. San Fran. Green Bay. For, for obvious reasons. Yeah, I think I have Green Bay too. I think it's going to be a good game, but we have Aaron Rodgers. So that's all they're really Yeah, I'm going back and forth. I don't know. I, I, I flip a coin. That's who I got. My, my hope is because Aaron Rodgers is from the Bay Area, played at Cal, that he's going to come to California and ball out. So we'll see. He usually yeah. does. Yeah. Maybe he'll I hope he comes out of the tunnel of California love. <laughs> Oh, speaking of like coming out of a tunnel, we I think we all watched your uh, your wrestling video on YouTube. Oh yeah, pretty wild. Bad. Thank you for sending me that. That's pretty it was, good. That's awesome. It was a little weird at first, but once things started going, it was actually pretty good, bro. You watch it a couple times, it gets better. Yeah, yeah. Well, obviously, <laughs> no, it's and it's, obviously it's, it's good. your first time. You know what I'm saying? It's like you know, but it was good. It was it was entertaining. Yeah, it doesn't. I, I mean, I was pretty entertained. Plus the camera, the camera it. angle is not the best right there, so it's not like you know. Did you guys you see the tooth the toothless messed out dude I was talking about now? Is that the, the Dallas one? jersey guy? Yeah, except that's not a Dallas jersey. That's a 
like a semi pro jersey. Oh, with wait, that's the, the mess guy. Oh, yeah, that's right. yes, that's the him. Blast Bro, jersey. he looked. I thought that was like a some like D two athlete coming in. Like just got kicked off the team. <laughs> no. like, he came into the ring with some force, man. Like he was in that bitch. The Iron Mountain <laughs> fucking uh, Arctic Blast jersey. Yeah, and exactly. Who, who is the big guy that th- I think he throws you out or he like hits you a bunch of times for sure? He fucks you up. Oh. You and the meth guy. Who's that? Um, he the looked, big dude. He looked like the mountain from Game of Thrones. <laughs> That's I don't know. He's just a regular dude. He's like the, one of the. He wrestles under Melvin Hayes, and then he has that was his second gimmick there for the battle royal. Mike, you took I that think, bump pretty. You, you took that bump really good. Like it didn't look like it hurt or did you know you landed on your feet and everything. It was a good bump. Did you hurt your back when you came out? No. It looked like the ring had like bent your back a little bit as you were falling out. He's probably just no. Seven. No, I was all right getting tossed out. But no, that's I got him. That was a good looking. You went over the ropes. Pretty firm kick, firm kick to the gut and a decent <laughs> headbutt beforehand. Yeah, I was gonna say the headbutt looks almost looks kind of real, bro. Like how oh, we I, knocked we knocked heads 100 percent because he did it right to the other guy too. I was like, damn man, <laughs> relax a little bit. He's about he's all about the headbutts, man. Yeah, he's a big guy too, though. It's like he's looking down at you, smashing his face into yours. I mean, obviously it's not as hard as he can, but you could tell yeah, it was like, like some force. I asked him how big he was earlier in the night. He's like, Well, I'm like six three. I didn't ask how much he weighed because just your average 265 pounds. Yeah, gotta be anywhere between 260, 300. Yeah, he was a big man. So he didn't win it though? No. Oh, well. No, the dude who I threw out first, or the other kid threw out. Oh, he had he, to go change, yeah. He had to go change, and he ended up winning. That's dope, though. So uh, we'll have that in the description if you guys want to check that out. Um, we'll link it on YouTube and then... Uh, in the show notes. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next Monday night's game is Baltimore-Los Angeles. The Rams have been playing kind of shitty, but um, I had a thought to go to that one. But I'm going to go to um, I'm gonna go to the, the Seattle and Los Angeles game on December 8th yeah, on my birthday. I'm going to go hit that That's going to be a good game. I'm going to go watch Russ Wilson okay. ball out. What about you don't want to you don't want to watch Lamar ball out? I do. He's going to be the MVP this but, year, but he's going to kill him. That won't even be a good I game. I do, but I, I just want to go on my birthday him. and like turn up, you know. So. I get it. Hey, what about the whole helmet thing? What did you guys think of that? Oh, the fight? Yeah. Oh, ripping off the helmet, Miles Garrett. So, who all got suspension is that? Yeah, uh, do we know um, they finalize that? Yeah, Miles yeah, Garrett got an indefinite while. season. Yeah. He's out At indefinitely. Pouncey got three games and the other guy from the Browns got one game. I don't remember it's the That's it. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure that was I was it. just trolling so hard on Twitter because I didn't even think it was that big. Like people were blowing it out of proportion. He used a weapon. Like I get it. <laughs> oh, I know. But yeah. then at the same time, like quit being such a pussy. Yeah. And exactly. you know it's football. I mean? Like But also, I mean, it it was a bit excessive, you know. I get it. Well, and it's not the it's not the worst Christ, thing dude. ever. But like, like he's just on. swinging the helmet. Like, come on, bro. Like, just right. be better than that, huh? You're like, you're he, in the what, NFL. What, what, do you, what do you think the quarterback said? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, and I don't think he grabbed his his dick or whatever. Like whatever people were saying, like no. oh he grabbed his junk. I no, don't think that was like that at all. Dick, but, but he, he did try to grab his helmet. fucking helmet. Yeah, he was grabbing his fucking helmet and twisting it, trying to rip it off and then punch them. Yeah. I'd flip the fuck out. Oh too. yeah, plus you're you're playing this... for the Browns, bro. Of course you're gonna flip yeah. out. Like, and there's this dude. There's a dude on Twitter <laughs> who like got uh, like kind of went viral and retweeted. He said a description that he went to high school with Mason Rudolph and that he was like a just a fucking bully like put him in a porter potty and tipped it with his friends and like stabbed no him shot in the that's ear with true <laughs> no way that would be out <laughs> look at his <laughs> face look at his face no, i guarantee that i'm sure true. he, he could have been a, he, he could have like, been a he, dick but i don't I think that's like it. that dude he put bro, miles garrett in a porta potty like come on bro Relax. <laughs> no miles no garrett. no no what do you th- no the court uh mason rudolph did it to some Kid, he went to high oh, school. Oh, just random. You're just school, talking about okay, just being a just being a bully. Okay, I got you. I got you. I thought you were saying they went to high school together, and that's why he was getting no. mad. <laughs> bro, I was like, I was like, no shot, bro. Miles Garrett, 6'5", 300 pounds. Like, relax. Right. No, he did some random. Kid so he was just a dick. With. Yeah, just a douchebag. I guess he looks like it. <laughs> but hey, OJ's, Miles Garrett, OJ don't Simpson be a fucking don't be an idiot. Yeah, OJ, OJ was like the best one. Like, terrifying. On Twitter, he was just like, every other sport, it's like part of the game. Like hockey, fighting is part of the game type of deal. Football is pretty much the the fall the fall version of ice hockey, more or less, and physicality-wise anyway. I mean, I would say a lot more twice about that in hockey. 
people would no. be like, oh, that's yeah. that's whatever. In hockey, it's like, man, that's yeah. whatever. Oh, crazy. Exactly. Yeah, that's, yep. Speaking of hockey, the Red Wings are doo doo. Dave, the ice man, man. the ice man's not happy. Surprise. Nobody thought that they were going to be like super good this year. They got, they got, they have a couple more pieces they got to get still to, you know. Iserman will get it done, I think. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Give him yeah, some I time. I love Iserman. He'll get, yeah. I think they need to get rid of Blash Hill. I actually, speaking yeah, of hockey, I, I'm, I, better, I bet a kid on Twitter 100 bucks that the Penguins would beat the Maple Leafs and the Penguins won 6-1, to one, so shout out to that guy. Oh, no, you see that gift floating around to the kid and his girlfriend yeah, no. at the Leafs game? Oh, yeah, that oh, was the, funny. Oh, the frown face kid. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah he's that's awesome, too. Take a picture. Somebody take a picture. And I'm like, I don't want to smile. And then I'm like, Fuck. Especially that's when your team is down 6-1. to 6-1. Yeah, to one. And they've been getting oh, crushed know, right? the entire time. They were down 4 nothing at one point. Just brutal. The fucking Leafs. Good old Mike Babcock, huh? Can't get her done anymore. Hey, we should talk about the fucking Astros, man. I've been oh, thinking yeah, about that. That bro. that is crazy. That is crazy. So just to set it up, I'm sure you, I'm sure people have heard about it, but if you haven't, so the Astros, the there's video and pictures all over the place where like a guy is setting up his pitches. They're calling pitches on the mound, the the away team, and then there will be a random bang on a trash can. The bang means change up or off speed pitch. So when there's no bang, the hitter knows there's a fastball coming. Also, and they were doing this illegally electronically with a camera that was fed in in between the locker room and the dugout where a guy sits there on a computer, sees the sign, and then smashes a fucking garbage can if it's an off-speed pitch. It's just illegal, and it's going to bring a lot of people down. But they also, with that same technology, the bullpen catchers had an earpiece in, and if he had his hands up on the fence... It was an off-speed pitch, hands down, fastball. So in case you oh. couldn't hear the thing, you could look out in the bullpen because he had a fucking earpiece in doing that. And then also, what came out today, what I see, uh, you can follow John Boy for this. He like puts out all the videos and shit. He makes a bunch of hilarious yeah, content. Watch John Boy's he's been on this like fucking crazy. Um, but they there's a video showing that one of the players had something on their finger, and it was reported that they were using electronic buzzers to call pitches like hey if it's an off speed we're gonna buzz this fucking thing that you have on your body somewhere and you're gonna yeah. know you guys gotta cheat that fucking bag it's that deep it's, it's, bro. this is crazy no dude okay listen but parker every team is trying to get ahead up in baseball people don't want to th- realize this but every team well, okay not every team most teams are trying to do shit like this they just don't take it this far well okay. also i mean the astros won a world series in 2017 yeah. and they beat the yankees and went to the world series this year and lost but still they've had good shitty. teams it's shitty for sure this. yeah I, I honestly think what's and, gonna happen to them. Well, they I mean, they came out and said like World Series. somebody came out and said it's gonna be like unlike anything you've ever seen in sports before, as far as punishment. It'll be unlike anything you've ever seen, and I think it'll be like some lifetime bans handed out to people that were involved. Like it's that serious. It's actually kind whoever, of hilarious. Whoever's setting up the monitor and like relaying the pitches is gonna lose their job, like, for sure. Oh yeah. Like they're, they're, yeah. you see oh, the, they have, like, the, you see the picture. Everything. Did you see the picture of the monitor getting set up? Yeah. Like in bet- did you see that? And they have Twitter? a towel hanging up in between. The out of the be- out of the balls. Just that's not no. Come on. What's <laughs> what sucks is I mean people say like I don't I I guess maybe people are trying to figure out what's going on but a lot of people have came out and said like yo this doesn't really matter that much but it does man when you're calling pitches if you know it's a fastball or you know it's oh, a change sure. or off speed that changes the entire game of baseball. That's, I mean, the For whole sure. point is the battle between the pitcher and hitter. Now you take that aspect away and you just have to hit the fastball when you don't hear the fucking garbage can getting pounded. Dude, we've all played baseball. You know how Emma and Michael and Parker, you guys know how easy it was. Like, if you knew, like, what Hootery was pitching or whatever, remember we, he started to tip his pitches? Like, he wouldn't lift his leg as high when he was throwing, like, a fastball. Yeah, and when somebody's that? throwing that hard, like, that makes a difference. For sure. So it's just crazy, man. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's. That's some wild shit, bro. And I, I honestly but can't believe it's the, so obvious too. Like I can't believe they went this long. The punishments need to be like pretty severe too. Oh, absolutely. You have to I want you guys right to go see that video, dude. It's so obvious. Like the banging is so like I, yep. I, people have people have been saying this. Like they've they've had a couple inquiries to the leagues to figure out what that banging was. It's it's a crazy. It was whistles too. The Yankees had whistle? complained about yeah. whistles. Whistles. Same yeah. type of thing. And you could tell that. in the video, it's a distinguishable whistle sound. It's not a sound it's that somebody's a, making with their mouth every time a pitch the crowd. goes. It's Where's like that a, it's a, it's a different whistle. Where that person's Where in the dugout. There, there's a, there's a space in between the locker room, and they go downstairs, and there's a little area between the dugout and the locker room. A hallway. Yeah, just a hallway where and you can just he sits up with a table, whistle. and there's a fucking garbage can there, just an empty garbage That's can. That's fucking crazy. 
Yeah, it's it's, it's kind of wild, bro. Honestly, it's like, gnarly. It's it's smart. It's it's not as bad if they weren't a successful team. Like you're gonna get punishment, but you won a World Series doing this shit. You think they're gonna be garbage for a while now? Uh, no. I mean, I mean they're, they're not gonna, gonna be able to kick their players off the team, but yeah. they'll probably lose all their draft picks. They'll lose draft picks. Yeah. I mean, you could take away the World Series. I don't really care. It is what it is. It does. It does matter more because it's the pitches and it changes the game completely. It's not like when Reggie Bush got paid money. We're gonna take away your championships. We're gonna take away your Heisman. No, that's hey, true. you still won them. You know what I'm saying? It was over some bullshit technicality, but this actually impacts the game on every pitch. So taking away that kind of means a little more. But again, I, I don't know. I think it's going to be crazy though. A lot of lifetime bans, I would imagine. I don't know. Any like GM or because it, it came from the the executives of the team. They told the scouts, "Hey, we're trying to get an edge. We need you to go to the game and figure out what we can pick up on as far as signs and what we can't, what we need to do so, etc." And they did. That. That's the thing though. Like in, in, in MLB, every game, that's the thing though. People are trying to steal signs. Like they're trying to get the sign. You know, they're their counts down and whatever sure, and the yeah. catcher's got to change it up you know like every Which time with the pitcher like that's a thing but, but that's in the game video. those are tactics in the game yeah you can't so, use video to get it and then relay it electronically exactly. how did they figure this out uh i believe it started with the yankees whistling thing and then i don't know who came out with the original story but somebody started looking into shit and because they, they're looking back to the 2017 playoffs and like now this john boy guy he's going through every game every game of the world series everything and just trying to you know, maybe not all the things are true, but he's just trying to see what he can pick up on that are, you know, going with these off speed or fastballs, whatever. He's trying to see what he can well, pick up on. And he people he, started to complain about the banging. Yeah, and he claims he has MLB executives like kind of talking to him about this, like, hey, if, you know, see what you can find out. I don't really believe that because I don't know, you're not gonna hire a Twitter guy to fucking investigate right. this, but He's been doing a good job, man. That's where I get all my information. I don't know. Yeah, me too. His videos are nuts. Yeah, and he comes. What's com- his name? I got It's John Boy. J O M Boy. Yeah, underscore. I think is his Twitter thing. But I- I've been watching him for the whole season because he just puts out during the regular season. He'll put out like funny good videos. Content. Yeah, doing lip readings and stuff, or getting the hot mics from the umps and just going over it. Uh, but that's that. I don't know. It's it's gonna be crazy, man. Yeah, I can't wait to see what the, the league does. Like it's like you said, it won't be like anything you've ever seen before. Well, maybe maybe Pete Rose. Pete Rose got a lifetime ban, but but what's that? That's over gambling. gambling. Yeah. So again, not the same. Like not impact. Well, yeah, I guess kind of. Imp- I don't know. Was he betting on himself or like his? Uh, he, he, yeah, they said he was betting on games that he was involved oh, in. Well, yeah. yeah, I guess that kind of sucks. But still, <laughs> no no defending that. Sorry, Pete. Was he though? Was he playing in games that he was involved in? No, this is when he was the like manager. He was like, in, I forget what he was like the hitting. I don't know what he was doing, but this is when he was when he was playing and when he was like managing. I don't know, but you just have faith. Let's call that faith in your team, man. You just want to put the money on him. Shit, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> not if you're betting on him to lose. Too crazy, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's not like a like what was his name Ray Donahue uh, or Tim uh, Donahue. Tim Donahue. Tim, yeah. The ref NBA, from the NBA. Ref. The ref from the NBA. They they like they're coming out with a movie or something about him. Really? Yeah, I, I just yeah. I just I just heard an interview with him and he said there's a movie. Yeah, him starring him. No, there no. somebody else is playing him. What a fucking crock of shit. Oh, you know what pretty- came out? I think this past Friday that you guys should watch. I didn't see it yet either. But the Sonny Liston documentary the who? about the mob and Sonny Liston, the boxer, about oh, how he threw yeah. that through the two fights against Muhammad Ali. Because the, the mob was gonna he, kill him. Oh wow! Don't they think he did get it, killed by the mob? Yeah, dude, that came. That was a Showtime, I think, a documentary that just came out this past Friday. That. I gotta see that. Hey man, not getting Showtime. I already got Disney Plus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so unless <laughs> you're putting this, that documentary, I'm getting Showtime on Disney Plus or Netflix. Fuck off. I, I just hey. you save me money with that bundle, so now I can. Oh yeah, Showtime. I have Hulu too. <laughs> actually, let's go, baby. Hey, just dude, let me huh. get that password. Did you did you cry when you saw Ben Askren retired? Oh, that sucks, man. I know we should talk about that, but that sucks. I mean, I think it's the right. He's, he's, he's got a bad hip, though, dude. There's nothing he can do with the fucking yeah. re- hip replacement. You can't be a yeah. top M- level MMA fighter with a replaced hip. And what a he said hip. is, <laughs> all he ever wanted was an opportunity to fight the best in the world. He got the opportunity. And he said he got it. So yeah. he, could, he he said he can't be mad at it. You know, it didn't go his way, but he got his opportunity. So I'm I'm happy with that, man. Go out on your own terms. Well, maybe not your own terms, but go out while you're at least. Your head is healthy for the most well, part. Well, you're still relevant. Yeah, and he has a lot of stuff going on. He does some wrestling stuff, and 
He'll be all right. So he got his he got his academy too. Yeah, he's also. I mean, well, that's the, what you want in a fighter when they go to retire. You want them to have Plan B. A lot of these guys just retire, and you don't know like what the fuck they've been doing for the past five years. Like, are they okay? So at least he has a, yeah. like, a public like plan. Diaz, like BJ. Brother. Yeah, nobody knows what the fuck's going on with BJ. Every other weekend, there's a video of him like beating somebody <laughs> up outside a bar in Hawaii. Apparently he's got like a, apparently apparently he's got a cocaine problem, and like I guess that he doesn't eat, stop or get clean until he gets into fight camp. No, <laughs> that's what everybody. Really? That's so what everybody that's like, what oh, triggers him. That's what triggers yeah. him to do better in life. That's why he wants to keep fighting because it gives him structure. That's he so quits sad, doing, bro. Quits doing drugs. That's he quits sad. going to the bar. Yeah, that's sad. As just fuck. lost with. Damn, this is a true story. This is BJ yeah, Penn he, right now. Yeah. Yeah, he's 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 lost. He's lost without fighting. Like that's why he that kept so losing sad, and fighting. Bro. I wish like guys like that. Do. I really wish the UFC would take care of him. Like him, Chuck Liddell. Like they tried, man. I know they they, they, they had jobs him. before, but they, they had to fire him because of Endeavor. Yeah, it just sucks, man. Like the legends who brought this sport up. I feel like there should be some sort of royalties or just just help him out, man. Give BJ a fucking job or just do something. I don't know. Yeah, Let him I, run yeah, a fucking. Yeah, it so, sucks. Make, so sixty-year-old Ken Shamrock doesn't have to wrestle in Impact Wrestling. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Hey, let BJ Penn run a fucking UFC gym in Hawaii or something. Let him manage it. Or, you know, just whatever. He does. I'm sure, you're not going to be a fucking millionaire, but hey, we got you a job, pal. You're all right. That's He just has to fight, man. It's tough. He's a man. fighter. I know. Yeah, that's true, too. And that's not going to end well if he doesn't, you know, find an alternative yeah. other than doing cocaine. It's going to end badly. <laughs> Look at look at how Matt Hughes was acting before that he got in that accident, man. He was yeah. threat, threatening his uh, his brother's son. He was threatening his wife. He was being crazy. He, he was, was talking crazy. about coming back to fight again before he got in that accident. He has Is that C- steroids? I'm sure he's got though? CTE. I'm sure he's got no CTE. Matt Hughes. No, it's CTE, dude. It's he's just he's fucked yeah. up. He's real fucked. Now he's even more fucked up. Well, yeah. Now he he's ain't. not even the same person. That's sad. That's a sad. Yeah, story. It's really fucking. That's sad, a really man. sad one. I love Matt Hughes. Matt Hughes is one of my favorite fighters too. of all time. Yep, I know. Well, that's he what uh, was... that's what Shab always says too. Like, stick around long enough, it just doesn't end well for anybody. Nobody at yep. the end of the, it's, it's, there's no light at the end of the tunnel in the UFC. You know, like, smart people get out on top. Yeah. Like DC, DC should have retired after he beat Stipe. An exception is is Jorge, like that dude. He's been in for how what thirteen? How long has he been? In the well, UFC? he's still like, young though, too. It's not he's like, still younger though because he started when he was young. But yeah, still that's crazy. Like yeah. he's no, been the, in a long time. Well, also he's getting the, the results the, though too. If you're losing, BJ, BJ Penn lost no, like yeah. six fights in a row. Yeah, no, the exception I'm, is yeah, actually George St. Pierre. That's the exception. Yeah, yeah, but again, you had the results. He left on top champion, came back, won a belt. Like he can come back for all I care. Like you earned that. That's what I mean. He's the exception. Yeah. If you have the results, fuck it. But if you're BJ Penn and you're just losing to nobodies on the fucking early prelims <laughs> of these cards, hey yeah, man, it's, it's time to hang it up. It did GSP defend at all? Or when he came or did back, he, won. Won. he won. Yeah, left. He came, yeah, he just won in the left. Yeah. Hey? What That's a bitch what move, man! Man, fuck. <laughs> do you want, do you want to fight? Do you want to fight you all, Romero? He said, "What a bitch move," and Parker <laughs> said, "That's the way to do it." <laughs> do you want to fight? Yeah. Did you want? Do you want him to fight Rioel Romero? Fucking a. He had a good. He had the, the fight that he up. could win lined up. He had the Bisbing fight. He could win that fight, and he did it. And I think he did the right thing too. Hey, I'm gonna take the money fights now. I've done enough for you guys. I've defended my welterweight belt back in the day. Whatever. I took my hiatus. I come back. I win again. I don't know you guys. Shit, bro. I'm gonna exactly. take my money fights now. What no, a Mike spit just in the doesn't face. Like hit his corner. Mike has hated him growing up. I don't know why. I remember <laughs> we'd be watching fights, and Mike would be getting pissed listening to him in the corner because the all right, bud. All right, yeah, let's keep the keep it going. Yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> Mr. St. Pierre. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what they yeah, hate. Jackson was so weird, man. They were so weird with him. No, that's, <laughs> but I I hated GSP because I hated watching his fights. Like, once he got the belt and just started dominating everybody, he dominated them by just getting on the ground with them and out-wrestling them. Oh, dude. Yep. Okay, so, so what, what happened? Right. What happened? Mike, what happened is before, okay, so before he was called Rush Saint, you know, George Rush Saint Pierre, he fought like yeah, a yeah. beast, but then he got knocked the fuck out, and then he started fighting like that. I thought it was, I thought the whole Rush thing was like a Canada thing. No, that's because he, that's how he fought. He fought, he was, he was an exciting fighter, but then uh, Matt, or uh, what's his name, Matt Sarah knocked him out, and then he started fighting like that. They said they said he's like one of the best wrestlers that ever walked in the UFC. And he never didn't have a wrestling background. He just that's what, yeah, one of the best wrestlers it. that never wrestled. Exactly. <laughs> said the MMA wrestling. Well, also, yep. hey, to this, I'm gonna go negative on GSP real quick. 
USADA comes around, he wins his fight and dips. Says I'm good on this shit for a little while. I don't think that's. I don't, I don't know, man. You're a dominant champion, and all of a sudden we're gonna get a drug testing program, and you're out. Now he you was always for str- he was always for stronger testing. I though. know, but I don't know. I know what he you mean. I, like, I just pretty bloated so. back then. The best way to hide is in plain sight. Ah, it is my time to retire. You just wanted to go chase dinosaurs and aliens, dude. Yeah, sure. He wanted to run from fucking USADA. Fuck USADA. If he comes back, he wants to fight Khabib. What do you think is a good fight for him? Not if he point. wants to fight Khabib? I don't know. <laughs> he said he wants to fight Khabib. That's what their team is planning. Like He's had test runs to make 155 and shit already. I don't GSP. see that. Yeah. I don't want to see it either. So oh, yeah, I, mean, that shit. I honestly I wish he would Tony just Ferguson. stop. Like you're on top, you came back, won your belt, cool. But if you want to fight again, uh, I don't think I want to see you at 155. Plus, it doesn't make any no, sense. He should fight the winner of Usman and Covington. That'd be cool. Mm-hmm. Or or or, uh, or Masvidal. I want Jorge. I want Jorge to fight. Man, he. I don't know why he's doing this bullshit. Even entertaining the fact to fight Nick. Like, bro, go fight for the fucking Aber. belt, man. What are nah, you talking he about? Makes more, he makes more. Dude, way I'll, more tell, money I'll tell you right now. Is. I'll tell you right now, Nick, Nick, Nick Diaz will not fight. I guarantee you Nick Diaz will not fight. I don't care what anybody's saying. If you watch the interview, Ariel straight out asked him like four times, and he never once like straight out said, yeah, I want to fight. He just beat around the bush and said some weird random shit. He does not want to fight. Trust me. Yeah, but even if he did, that. that's the money fight. If you're Jorge, you don't, you, I'm sure he might care about a belt, but he's trying to get paid, bro. Like, yeah, you're he's... probably not getting money fighting. Fuck, maybe, maybe Colby because they have a team you know, connection back there. That's kind of shattered now, but him and Usman, that's not selling a lot of fucking pay-per-views. I'm really excited for that fucking fight, though. I would Me really too. love Colby and GSP. That that sounds like a really good fight. That would I'm excited be. for I love, I love Ortiz Colby. Wilder fight. Wait, oh, when yeah, is that? that's coming up this weekend. The, the Ortiz and Wilder fight on the 23rd. Oh, that's this weekend. Yep. Watch, watch him. Did we call Rock this already? Who you, who you guys got? I got Wilder. Easy. Wilder knocked I think you're all going to say Wilder, yeah. but I... Yeah, dude, it's gonna be closer than people think. Fight? I mean, he's I not do. a chump, obviously, but I just he knocked him down the last time they fought, and they only, that was only in 2018. That wasn't that long ago. How much of a reach does he have on? He's like towers over him. <laughs> Doesn't people he, are gonna be surprised, man? Towers Wilder fans teams. are gonna be surprised. Well, also, they've been talking about this Fury shit for quite a while now. So, is he gonna look past him? I don't know. I think it's a trap. I think it's a yeah. trap, but I don't think he's gonna lose. But I think it's gonna be like this: the first fight. I think he's gonna have some trouble. It could be a close one. I, I think, people don't understand. Well, I, don't, I don't think he looks past him in any way. No, yeah, of course he's a professional fighter, but still, you're you're trying to make plans with Fury to like get. They do second, have a contract already yeah, set up I for know. that fight. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's in a your ways mind, away though. But that's in your conscience. You know you have to beat this guy. Maybe that motivates that's you not more that long. to get to Fury. But man, he could be in the back of your mind, and that could be the difference. Is Fury in your mind, or is, or are you waiting for the um, Ruiz Joshua fight? I no, think Fury, Fury, that, Fury thing set up. Yeah, you want you're worried about the Fury fight, and you especially don't want to lose before that. It's just a lot of pressure. I was just it's watching something. I was just just watching something today. They already have the contract in place for that fight, and they said that it could fuck him. Even if he doesn't lose, dude, if he gets a bad cut, if he breaks his hand, like that could fuck up the whole thing. Yeah. Hopefully, he has whoever the fuck put all that Vaseline on Fury's face in his corner. But yeah, I know, right? The same cut, man. Just glob. Like, that guy was a game. <laughs> all right. Well, right there is probably the perfect place to finish. Again, we appreciate all the support week to week. Follow the Twitter reviews from the 906. Uh, shout out to Ray Bryce for coming on. Captain of the Michigan Go Tech follow Husky him. Uh, hockey team. Go follow him on Twitter. Follow the Huskies as they play Northern this weekend. Friday, it's at Michigan Tech. Saturday, it's at Northern. Uh, good luck, Ray. We're all in your corner, buddy. And uh, we will see you guys next week.